My name is Oliver Picard and I play with classic cars on some of the world's most beautiful roads for a living. That Porsche rear engine blood shining through. In 2020, I went to Retromobile Paris and saw some of the most exquisite, handmade, hand-finished and expensive cars on the planet. On returning home, the pandemic hit and I decided that the time for dreaming was done. I wanted to build my dream. I wanted to build the car that I had been designing since childhood. So with the help of my aerospace engineer and rallyist father, Andrew, we set about trying to find the perfect project. We found it rotting in a side yard in Normandy. Crashed, twisted, broken, buckled and fire damaged, a GTM. We dragged it home and tore it apart. Re-engineered from the ground up. Engine, suspension, fuel system, drivetrain, even the seating position. Everything. Bespoke, one of one. This is Project Mosquito. Hello, Hello. and welcome to the workshop. So, what we're we doing today, Dad? Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to get everything else tacked up. We're going to get the top arm in place. We're going to check now the other things tacked up. We're going to run the suspension through its arc. It's travel, uh, check the camber, check the tour, make sure everything's perfectly lined up. And put a wheel on. Put a wheel on. We're going to put a wheel together. And then, by the end of this video... Hopefully we'll have it sat on its suspension. Hopefully. No. No, come on. Let's, let's commit to this. Okay. We will have it sat on its suspension. There we go. That just shows we have the same small amount of linear camber gain left to right, which is superb. So as each wheel goes up, they, they actually gain camber in a linear fashion and they gain the same amount of camber, which is absolutely optimal. Yep, and we've also done it using the standard top arms. Um, once we Later we'll be fitting adjustable ones, but at least we know the two suspension pickup points the two pivot points are in the perfect place because it's no matter if you've got adjustable top arms unless the two arms work in the same plane no matter how much you adjust them they're never going to be the same so the most important point is this point and this point have to be in the same place in relation to the rest of the suspension so they both work in exactly the same way it's not just that i in, uh, in a perfect world you want that arm to be as long as possible as well we don't need tons of static camber and the way we'll set our camber is to actually drive it and then check the tires with a thermometer with a, a thermal gun and actually see the temperature across the tire but because this is a road car and because it has well, basically a double wishbone suspension it doesn't need a ton of camber anyway no. so we might just be able to get away with completely factory arms the other day i posted a little video i'll be able to stick it up in the corner above me somewhere here whoops but i posted a little video gif thing of the suspension and dad compressing the suspension with a wheel on and you'll notice that the body kind of rotates the body is allowed to roll but the tire stays perfectly flat and that's what we're hoping for we're hoping for the body to be able to do what it wants to do but the wheels stay perfectly planted so that you get tons and tons of grip because we're not using a rear anti-roll bar because dad hates them um, and it's just not a good idea 
the inside wheel isn't going to be pushed down into the ground, jacking the back of the car up. And we're not going to have tons of jacking forces because... Okay. That, that, that actually only happens if the centre of gravity and the roll centre are too close together. Yeah. You don't want them too far apart because then you get body roll. If you have them too close together, you get what we call corner jacking, where one set of suspension fights the other side and it actually tries to lift the car. Yeah. And you don't want that at all, especially like it, it's a recipe for snap oversteer. So the back end just lets go and uh, it, it goes a little bit Renault 5 turbo on you, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's not very good. But this is the other advantage of using actual rear suspension for rear suspension. A lot of people out there who build mid-engine cars use front wheel drive suspension, suspension on the back. And the problem with that is that your points between here and here are the same on the front as they are on the back. So they use, so like a GTM from the factory uses front uprights on the front and front uprights on the back. But then your roll centers are all messy. Oh, yeah. And you have to do loads of finagling with your actual pickup points here, but it will never be quite right. Whereas because we're using a shorter upright at the front and a tall upright at the rear we want the front to the car to turn around the front of the car so that the front anti-roll bar actually flattens the car out as it goes around a corner if that makes sense yes. which is also why you need a super stiff chassis because otherwise it just turns into a spring you could never really do this kind of setup on a production car because they're just not stiff enough no. Um, especially things like, you know, an MR2, uh, a Mark III MR2 that doesn't have a roof or yeah, something any, like that. Fact, anything with no roof. Yeah, unless, you'd have to unless, cage unless, the heck out of unless it. Unless McLaren build it. Yeah. You can't, you, can't, uh, you can't do it with MR2, you can't do it with MX-5. Most production cars just aren't capable of this kind of suspension setup. It's not just that. 99 of all production cars are made to understeer on the limit. Yeah. Which is basically, if you're not understeering, when you turn, you turn your wheels too fast, it's the front wheels that slide. Yeah, not it's the safe. Back wheels. It's a safe way. Yeah. Okay. So if you over overdrive your car, it just plows straight rather than spinning because spinning is dangerous. Yeah. People forget that when a car goes round a corner, all four wheels travel different distances and at different speeds. We want to let each wheel act independently of each other and apply power independently. And this is one of the big reasons for not needing a differential because all four wheels will have grip and then you apply power to one wheel. And if that wheel spins, it doesn't matter because you've still got three wheels that have grip. Whereas with VTEC, if we're on our way out of a corner and you put your foot down and it just blips into VTEC and it happened to spin both back tyres, you'd be pirouetting down the road. You went sideways very quickly. Yeah, and there's no way that you're going to catch it in something this short. For those of you just joining us, to give you an idea of how low and light and tiny this car is, um, it will weigh 620 kilos as its finished weight, which is... 30 kilos lighter than the original classic Mini. Not even the Mini Cooper, which was slightly heavier. It was lighter than that. Uh, the roof height will be 42 inches, so it'll be slightly above a GT40. A GT40 with a gurney bubble is the same height as this. It will pass by underneath the side windows of most hatchbacks. So I'm going to have to have a very, very big horn on this thing, just in case like trucks try to drive over the top of me. You know, that scene in the Fast and the Furious where they drive underneath the truck, that might be me if I'm not careful. Um, but to give you a really good idea, um, let's compare it to a modern sports car, shall we? Like a, a Cayman GT4, Porsche's two seat, mid-engine, lightweight sports car. Well, on a Cayman GT4, if you don't go for the sports seats and you go for the nice stereo, and you go for like you don't go for the carbon lightweight package and, and normal steel brakes. The Mosquito will be a Mazda Miata lighter than a Cayman GT4, and that's why we don't need a, a rear anti roll bar. Simply because when you go into a corner, you're carrying far less inertia. There is less force trying to roll the car, which means that you can use lighter springs. You can use lighter. Um, tyre pressures even than, than pretty much any other production car. 
it really is magical but that's why we've designed this car like this from the outset so that it will handle like a little tiny formula car but with rally suspension <laughs> If you're going to build a project car on YouTube, you should really choose something that a lot of people feel a connection towards. You should feel, choose something that people are familiar with, something that people understand. You know, something like a, a Mazda MX-5 or a Civic or a Nissan S chassis or a, like a Skyline, something that, you know, a 350Z, something that people really know about and something that people are familiar with, BMW. Um, 3 Series or something like that, 911, something that people have heard of, not a Mosquito. Uh, but I didn't get this car because I wanted a YouTube project build, I just bought this car because I wanted this car. <laughs> and so, we, I kind of shot us in the foot because obviously, relatability does well on YouTube. You know, you watching me and understanding what we're doing, and understanding why we're doing it and you feeling kind of the same way and being like, oh yeah, I've always wanted a nice 911. That, that is what drives views. That's what goes really well. I say so. And so, and so, when a lot of the media companies and stuff that make car content and when a lot of big channels get together to, to kind of discuss their next project car, they choose stuff that they know is going to be relatable. Super Skylines, all that jazz. But I'm well aware that this is completely unrelatable. I'm well aware that this is kind of the opposite of everything everybody else is doing which is why it's kind of perfect for us, because we've never done the expected thing. We've never done what everybody else does. I tried being normal once. It was the most difficult five minutes of my entire life. And uh, it's just not how I'm built. And what's really funny is we are building this car, and we don't really have any reference for it. We've never, I've never driven anything that's as fast as this car's going to be, like ever. Dad... Had a, a data mass or Pantera for a while. But even you, have you? Never driven anything as fast as this is going to be. Not as light, not as like, stuff with as much power, but not stuff that weighs 620 kilos. I mean, most people have never been in a 620 kilo car. Dad weighs, uh, what's the, what's the Diane 6 weighs 650? Yeah. And it has a two cylinder engine and 602 cc. It doesn't even have a litre engine. And yet, it can be propelled to 75 mile an hour, perfectly fine. This thing's going to have 250 horsepower, well, in excess of 250 horsepower. And so I understand it's not relatable, it's not, it's not what people know. But I think that's what kind of makes it cool. Even if YouTube views won't kind of reflect that, I don't know. I just think it's one of those things where, like, you know, you might be watching this and thinking, it's really cool. I really like what they're doing. That's a really smart bracket. But what the heck is this car? The answer is, I don't know. 
It, I know what the car is, but I've never driven, it, driven anything like it. I have no frame of reference for what this thing is going to be. Now, we know the engineering, and we know how it's going to handle, hopefully, if, if all of our maths is right. And we know how fast it's going to accelerate, because it should well out accelerate. Uh, it should well out accelerate something like a, a Lamborghini Murcielago or a Dodge Hellcat or anything like that. And it should handle as well, if not better than a Lotus. But we've got no frame of reference. And so, as far as relatability goes, we've completely failed to make the perfect YouTube project car. But, I still want to, I don't know, I still want it to be right, I still want it to be awesome. And I kind of love that we're doing something completely different from what everybody else is. I think there's too many channels out there all copying each other, all doing the same thing. I've noticed this with, um, we have a second channel where we, Mary and I, my partner, we do videos about our house stuff because I'm also building a house at the same time and our veg garden and all that because this is a, a an off-grid garage that's all solar-powered and the house is all solar-powered. We have a spring where we get our water from and it's all plumbed in with a well and all of that. And we, when we started making um, films about the garden and stuff, we watched some other YouTubers and what they were doing doing similar sort of stuff. And a lot of them were just wrong. <laughs> a lot of what they were doing was just wrong. And so we kind of said, well, we can't do what everyone else is doing. We've just got to do our own thing. We've got to do something completely different because they were all copying each other. And so one channel did one thing wrong and then all of the other channels did that exact same thing wrong. So there's no point watching all of the channels because every single channel is a copy of the channel that's doing the best. And I've never wanted to do that. I've never wanted to be on YouTube and just like copy what everyone else is doing. You know what I mean? Like, at one point, every single YouTube channel had a Lamborghini. I mean, it f that's what it felt like at least. Everyone but, I don't know, Speed Banditos and Mighty Carbods had a Lamborghini. And uh, I've, I've never wanted to be like that. I've never wanted to be that channel that just follows numbers and wants mass appeal. I've, I'd love a million subscribers. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't. Heck, I'd love 10 million subscribers. But I don't, I don't ever want to buy a car just because I think it'll get views. You know, a lot of people who uh, watch this channel because of the 2CV stuff, they were like, but what has that got to do with 2CVs when I bought this? And the reality is that I don't want to just do 2CV stuff forever. I love my 2CV, it's an absolutely fantastic car, but I don't want four of them. You know, I've got the best 2CV, Jolene is the best 2CV. And now I want to do something different. It still holds the same mentality because that's my mentality. It still has to be rebuildable, it still has to be 100% reliable, it still has to be lightweight, uh, it has to be able to be repaired like all these things really matter to me. It's why I chose the suspension that can be completely, I can completely rebuild like the shock absorbers myself. It's why we've chosen, you know, wheel bearings that are off the shelf and all of these things that can be rebuilt. It's even why I'm building my own vintage wheels that are three piece and can be repaired. Like the same mentality that's in the two CVs in this, it's just in a different way because I want something that I can sit on a motorway in and, and do 120 kilometers an hour all the way to England and not feel tired and not spend a fortune on fuel. I don't want to, you know, I could have bought a Bentley or something like that that's like a big GT car that would have been really good for that, but then you're spending a fortune on fuel. I don't want to do that. This should get, no, we're hoping 50 miles to the gallon plus UK MPG, not American MPG. Um, I don't know what that is in American, I'll put it up on screen. But we wanted to take our same philosophy that we've used in the houses, that we've used in, you know, that I've, the reason I bought my 2CV in the first place, like that's my philosophy. That it's this infinitely rebuildable thing and I wanted to carry it over into my version of a supercar because most supercars, they're wasteful, they're impractical, you can't park one, you can't really use one. 
And I didn't want that. You know, I, I didn't want something that you have to put a nose lift on. You have to have a button that lifts the front end up so that you can drive into your own driveway. I don't want that. My driveway is like garden. <laughs> and I wanted, you know, rally suspension and all that. So I understand that it's not relatable. But if I'm honest, I look at most supercars, I look at most modern stuff, if I'm truly honest, and it's not relatable to me. It's not my mentality. Um, I didn't want something that was four-wheel drive and turbo and weighed, you know, over a ton and had a squillion horsepower because that's not how I want to go fast. I want to go fast efficiently if I go fast at all. And I wanted something that felt special driving around a car park at 10 miles an hour and then felt special on a track at 210 miles an hour. You know, well, not 210 miles an hour, 210 kilometers an hour. What's that in real numbers? 150, something like that. You know what I mean, though? No. I, I could have, well, I did actually look at buying an MX-5. I had one offered to me and it was really nice. And then I thought, but do I want to just become an MX-5 YouTube channel? And then the second I get something else, that gets a following. And then everyone's like, well, where's the 2CV content and the MX-5 content? I don't want to be a slave to another brand. Because I think br brand loyalty is a bit of a, a, bit of a crazy thing. Because companies don't care about us. Um, they care about our money. And occasionally they make something really special. And that should always be commended. Whenever someone makes something super special, that's awesome. But Dad and I are really rare in this world. We are two people who know how to work with our hands. And I know that there's a lot of people who watch these videos that know how to work with their hands. You know, we are lucky that we've got a following with a lot of engineers and stuff that watch these videos and enjoy our videos. And that's super cool. But, like, how long are you going to be able to build your own car for? You know, how long is that going to be a possibility? When I was a little kid, I always loved the Art Deco designers. Yes, I was a really weird kid. But when I was a kid, people like Raymond Lowy were my heroes. I think I might have used this piece of sandpaper to its inth. But um, when I was a kid, Raymond Lowy, the guy who designed the Coke bottle and things like the Panama logo and the Shell logo, he was one of my heroes because I always thought that wouldn't it be, one, wouldn't it be cool if everyone in the world did everything to like the best of their ability and made everything the best that they could possibly make it in my childhood naivety. But also, Raymond Lowy is one of the only industrial designers that actually kind of got to see a world in his image, like the way that he imagined it, because he produced so much stuff, he made so much stuff, you know. You could have flown on a plane with an interior designed by Raymond Lowy for, with um, an air, what do you call it? Uh, you could have flown on an airline with a logo designed by Raymond Lowy, got on a plane with an interior designed by Raymond Lowy, ordered a Coca-Cola and sat on a plane with an interior designed by Raymond Lowy and drunk a Coca-Cola out of a Coca-Cola bottle designed by Raymond Lowy, then got out of the plane at the airport, got into a Studebaker Ad uh, Avante designed by Raymond Lowy, driven to your house, walked in and turned on a lamp by Raymond Lowy and then sat in a chair by Raymond Lowy. Like, he got to see a world that was the way, the closest possible the way that he imagined it. And I think that's super, super cool. But for how long are we going to be able to make something like this? And so I wanted to do it while we could. You know, Dad and I are both kind of at a really good level in our abilities, in our learning process. And I knew that we'd have to learn a lot to build this because there's a lot in this that we've never done before. But what a cool thing to make one with my father. What a cool thing to share with the internet. And what a cool thing to be able to design my own car from scratch. Because I love making videos and I love like the editing process and, and taking all of the story of our week and then assembling it into, I hate the word content, and it's not art. I'm not going to call these videos art. But it's still something the way that I want to show it. And I just think it's extra cool that we can make a car that is 
the way that I want to show you what I feel a car should be, what I feel a sports car should be, and what isn't like the future, but what I don't know the way I wish now was. <laughs> so if I have the ability to, and I have a platform to show you all, and I have the ability to design a car, and Dad and I have the ability to make a car, then why, like, we're kind of doing a disservice if we just buy an MX-5, aren't we? Really. Because anybody can put coilovers that someone else made on an MX-5. Like, if you can make a car, I think you've got the obligation to build the car. I think if you can mill the house, you have the obligation to kind of make something better. You know, there are a million architects in the world that never build their own house that never kind of put their own stamp on the world and go, this is how houses should look. And I think anybody who does that should be commended. And that's why there are, there are loads of YouTubers out there who make cars that aren't perhaps my taste, but I'll never do them down because the fact is that they are building the thing. You know, they said, I want to, I want to make a thing and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And they went out and did it. Uh, I remember my dad when I was a kid telling me, about gunners, right? He, my, dad's a, my dad becomes a very philosoph, um, a philosoph, a very philosophical person at times. And my dad said, "You know, the world is full of gunners. It's full of people who are going to do this and they're going to do that. And oh, I'm going to, I'm going to move away from the UK and I'm going to live my dream. And they never do. And the reason why we moved away from the UK and the reason why we are here is because we didn't want to be gunners." We wanted to do a thing, and so we seized the moment, we seized the day, and we did it, you know? And that's why I'm building this, because I want to seize the day, and I want to do it. I don't want to be a gunner, you know? I want to build my own house that is the way that I want to see the world, and I want to see my house, and I'm going to build my car that's the way I want to see the world, and the way I want to see my house. And I'm going to drive my car up to my house that I designed in the car that I designed and we're gonna walk in and I'm gonna walk up a staircase in my house that I designed and that I made and I'm gonna see the world the way that I wish it was and I want to share that with everybody and that's why you should be subscribed to this channel and if you're not then there's a button down there that says subscribe because I'm gonna take you all with me. Because there's a million people that can mourn about things. And I don't want to do that. I don't never want to mourn online. There's enough people that complain and mourn. Enough engineering YouTube channels that draw a thing on a whiteboard, tell you the problem. They, they make this really negative video title and they're like, the problem with hydrogen internal combustion engines. And they just tell you all the problems with a hydrogen internal engine. They don't actually try and come up with any solutions, which is what engineering is. Otherwise, you're just moaning. And I don't want to do that. I want to actually make something. And I want to actually come up with solutions. Because that's what life should be. We should all come up with solutions, not just moan about problems. And make something awesome. And make the world a better place through it. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm saving the world by building that car. I'm not. But hopefully I cheer you up. And if you've had a really difficult week, you can put your feet up. Grab a cup of coffee. Sit down and think. Yeah, I feel motivated now. This morning when I got out of bed, I felt really miserable. And now I've watched this video and I feel motivated. And I'm going to get up and I'm not going to be a gunner. And I'm going to get out there and I'm going to do something. Or just think, I've had a really hard week and I've worked really, really hard. And I actually deserve to rest. And I deserve to actually have time. I'm not going to rest. I'm not going to take a break. I'm actually going to take a break. And I'm actually going to do something of, that I want to do. Because that's what you should all do. Because life is too short to be miserable. Life is too short to buy boring furniture, live in boring houses and drive boring cars. Sorry, rant over. <laughs> you can use your angle grinder now. <laughs>
It simply clicks together with the greatest of ease. Oh, it's not working, is it? What? Is it turned on? Yes. It's right. been turned on for like 10 minutes. Okay, it's super easy. Super easy when you pick something up from there, you look to here, and you go, oh, I'll put this on here, because that's where it goes, but it isn't. So what I've learned to do over the years is mark it. A little bit of red pen and a little bit of red pen and you get it on the right side and the right way up, not back to front and upside down. But does it stop you bending things the wrong way? No! <laughs> <laughs> Temporarily put my big boots on. Good morning, bye bye. <sighs> Yesterday we got a, a wheel ready, so we are ready to fit another tyre. And uh, it, I mean, yesterday as well, it took an entire day. We didn't film it, we just cracked on. Because if you'd like to see and know about these wheels, then uh, there is a video all about it, and there'll be a link to that video at the end of this video. <sighs> Woohoo! A sturdy pair of boots is necessary. It's only a tiny stretch, so you don't need fire. That's an unnecessary loss of eyebrows. Need to give it. Hey, here we go. Still, so you can see that it's still not properly seated. There we go. <laughs> And that's what you've got to be careful of. You've just got to watch your fingers. <laughs> and then, there were two. <laughs> it's fat. She thick. Well, the mosquito has a chunky bum. <laughs> a chunky derriere, actually, because the got is. You have to actually finish the suspension now. <laughs> all that's left to do is all the work. Because, of course, by the end of this video, these wheels will sit on the floor and we're going to see it at some semblance of ride height. Oh, so chunky. It really does look like a little formula car now. <laughs> so cool. For those keeping count at home, this is the original 13 inch wheel that came on a GTM coupe. And this is, of course, our 14 inch wheel with a, uh, this is a 15513 on it. And this is a 19514. And uh, so it's bigger, it's taller, it's wider. These wheels weigh exactly the same as these wheels do with the tyres mounted. So even though it's a bigger wheel, even though it's a wider wheel, we don't lose anything in, uh, in having bigger, wider tyres. There's no extra unsprung mass. Because we film with GoPros, GoPros are great because you can swap batteries backwards and forwards and kind of they're great for a workshop setting because uh, they're tough but 
the GoPro distorts the image, so it's very difficult to get a sense of scale. And uh, I think that gives you your sense of scale. <laughs> right there. Because that is nearly the same height as that. And remember, that's a fold route. <laughs> Now, we get to do the fun part again. Take it all apart again. Uh, so we've got to drop the engine, take the engine out, unbolt all the suspension, lift up the roll cage and pop it on the table so that it can be finished welded and the bottom of the front suspension mount can go on. By the time we finish this, we're like a Formula One pit crew. This time we shall not forget the wooden wedge. Yeah. Where's the wooden wedge? Well, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steady as she goes. That one and this one. Right, come on then. There we go. And up she pops. Yay! Hey, that's best we've done it yet. We put the table so far away. <laughs> Yeah, best we've done it yet, that. Yep. How long did that take? 10 minutes? 10 minutes. It's now 24 hours and a lot of welding later, which explains our bedraggled expressions. We, um, we didn't film anything, we just cracked on. It's a lot of welding and it takes a lot of time. It's just laborious, isn't it? The thing is, it doesn't look much different now than it no. did before. You, that it's all together. Yeah, you can't, you can't weld it and weld it and weld it and weld it because that gets too much heat into it and it all bends. You've got to do it in little bits and it's just, it's all a bit laborious, but it's worth it in the end. Yeah. And there's no point us doing any more welding until this engine is in this chassis and these wheels touch the floor for the very first time and we get proper proof of concept because we've got one side like articulating and visual and we've got the other side but we haven't got the two together until now yep. right let's crack on crack and on. get this thing in because this video has to be up in less than 24 hours as well up. okay we're lined up and down down, down, down. Now bear in mind we have no preload in the coilovers currently. So it's gonna have a lot more squat in it and a lot more sag in it than it otherwise would. But can we put the table out forward? If I do that.
Yeah. I could do real like what? Some <laughs> I'm holding front of a gar up here. But a block of wood, something. Cover. Oh, you start well, right. We can just probably put it forward, you know. Yeah. I'm scared. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. I was gonna say. Yeah, run myself over with my car that's got two wheels on. <laughs> Woohoo! Yep. Dad, I've got no option. It's <laughs> flipping heavy. Yeah. Tell you what, shockingly dirty under this night's no, too too high that. Shockingly dirty under the under that uh, chassis table. Spin it round so we can show it in the sun. Yeah? <laughs> we have the world's coolest rickshaw. <laughs> I just need a minute to appreciate this myself and also sweep up because it's filthy. <laughs> right, sweeping brush. Well, I'll tell you what, Dad. We did it. Yep. That was a heck of a lot of work. You've still got quite a bit of finishing to do on this, but oh, yeah. it's all there. Yeah, but I mean, to get to get it on the uh, wheels for this video yeah. was a mammoth task. It, we've worked flat out, and uh, it looks mega. The ride height's not quite right yet, because the bottom coilover bolt is not the correct size. That still needs sorting out. That's one of the things that Dad's saying, but... It's mega. I'm so happy with it. Yeah. I mean, no, it has no chassis because this is the roll cage. It has no subframes. <laughs> it's awesome. Yep. I'm, I'm it's so... Never so much, has so much work been done for so little. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. Every single week, we try and walk in this workshop and do uh, make as much progress as possible, but make as little car as humanly possible yeah. to keep it as lightweight as we can. And uh, the thing is, we haven't used any high tech materials, we just use steel. Yeah, well, it's, it's coal roll seamless, but it's posh steel, but it's still steel. It's flipping expensive steel, I can tell you that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, obviously, it all needs finishing and painting. That's all of these bits that are done with steel it so far. But it's well good. And I can't wait for next week because next week we're going to make the centre tunnel fit with the seats and. Uh, and all of that, but... Yeah, because we need a little break from suspension. We do. I, well, before, not, not for long, though. No, before we do the front, though, we need a we need an easy week, because like, we've taken... We took a week, well, took two weeks to do this particular job, just because it is so big, and some things you just can't rush. There are some jobs that you just, like... You need the time, you need to take your time to do them right, you need to make sure your math is right, you need to make sure things haven't moved when you've welded them and all that kind of thing. And even at this, like it's not ready, it's not finished, that side doesn't have a proper wheel bearing in, this side doesn't have a proper wheel bearing in, like nothing's nothing's a hundred percent, but I'm well happy. Yeah. I could not be happier. Yeah, what we'll do when it's when we get it to a really good stage and it's ready for paint, we'll pull everything apart. We'll lighten all the suspension. Yep. We'll paint it all and then we'll rebuild it with brand new wheel bearings, brand new bushes, brand new whatever it needs it's gonna get. Oh, so make sure that you subscribe to this channel because it's only gonna get better from here. From from here on, it, it will start looking like a car quicker and quicker. It will start looking like a thing. And all until now it's looked like a Kids I don't know. Frame. Yeah, like a climbing frame on a on a weird pilot and stuff. But obviously now it's a car. I mean, it's check this out. It has suspension and everything. It's so cool. I love it so much. And you can really see what made me freak out the other week. If if the camera comes round to the back here, you can really see that. 
you, you can now see, especially because the floor isn't level, that this hoop is off center to one side, which I did on purpose so that it would clear the engine here because you can really see how tight that clearance is. And, uh, and because it's all symmetrical here, the roll bar's all symmetrical, just the hoop slightly to one side. But that completely made me freak out. <laughs> And it looks proper off center and weird. But it's all correct and it's all there and the geometry is all right. <sighs> I'm sore. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to feel at the minute. It's been, uh, it's been a long time coming. Off weather. And it's a, it's a mix between relief and excitement. <laughs> and we don't have a word for that, do we? But it's amazing. I'm, I'm really, really happy. So if you've enjoyed this video, and you'd like to see more, like I said, please make sure you, that you subscribe to this channel because it's the best way to support us building this car. Anyway, YouTube, have you noticed this? When you like a video on YouTube, now it comes up with a little animation when you click like. Really? Yeah, it's super cool. It like little fireworks, it's awesome. <laughs> um, so make sure you check out that little animation by clicking like and subscribing to this channel because it actively helps support us building this car. And uh, I keep getting invited to car shows and stuff, but I need your help to finish this car and then I can get it to car shows and show it to you all and track days and stuff. And uh, make sure you click the bell icon. And if you've, if you've watched this video and you still want to watch more, there is the full playlist there. There is um, two buttons, one which is my channel and one which is the channel I have with my partner, which is on my house and garden. That's Oliver and Merriam. And there's other other stuff other two other videos so thank you all for watching please be awesome to each other and uh let's have a funky little montage bye bye